Alright, this screencast is just a quick review of single replacement reactions. If you'll recall, single replacement reactions involve a compound and an element reacting to form a new compound and a new element. So in this case you see we have compound AB reacting with element C to and C kicks out A and forms a new compound uh, with B. This compound in this case is BC. Um, we can see this typical format with uh, metals replacing metals and also with nonmetals replacing other nonmetals. So let's take an example here and let's think through how we actually rationalize this. One piece of reference material that you'll have to make sure that you have available is the activity series. The activity series gives us a list in order of metals from the most active, you see lithium here is the most active, to the least active, in this case gold. So if we look at our example, in our example we've got aluminum metal and we have it immersed in a solution of iron 3 chloride. Now to determine if the reaction is going to happen you essentially have to just compare the two metals. So if you notice aluminum is right here and iron is here. So since aluminum is more active it's going to have the ability to displace iron from the solution. And so in this case iron gets kicked out back into its elemental form, which would be a solid, and aluminum would bind with the chloride ion. Remember aluminum forms a plus three charge, so the formula would be AlCl3, and that, su that substance is soluble in water, so we put aqueous with it. So these reactions only happen electrochemically when the metal is more active than the ion of the other metal in the compound that it's going to replace. So if you want to think about this on the nanoscale, uh, let's look at an example that we've done in class. And This is an example where we have copper metal and in a solution of silver nitrate. So that's AgNO3, which is aqueous. Now, copper is not as active Now, copper is more active than silver, so it's able to displace silver from the solution. And what that really takes the shape of is shown here in this graphic on the left. So here we have copper ions. Here they're shown nice and coppery colored, interacting with silver ions. So these are our silver ions, Ag+, and these are our copper atoms. Now, notice there's no charge associated with them yet. That's because copper is actually going to give up some electrons to silver. And when that happens, you notice we form over here on the right-hand side, over here, we form silver, and it's been reduced to its elemental state. And now we have copper 2 plus ions in solution. And those copper 2 plus ions give it that, that pretty blue color that you see here. And the silver, as, it, as the crystal grows, we get these nice little crystals of silver that form. This is an electrochemical process, and if you remember from our previous experiments, we call these processes oxidation reduction. Because one element donates electrons, and the other accepts them. Oxidation is classified as the loss of electrons and reduction is the gain. So you always have one with the other. So in this case, copper gives electrons to silver, and as a result, silver becomes elemental over here, and copper becomes an ion because it gives up two electrons for every copper atom. So that's an overview. Hope it was helpful.